Hi, I'm Don, and this is The Hobbyist Geek. Welcome back, y'all. Last time around, we built these two wonderful legs for Bumblebee, and they were way more complicated than I anticipated. I'm still hopeful that we'll be able to finish the piece today, uh, but we'll just have to see how far we get. But how about that's enough talking for me, we get some parts out here, and we just keep, keep going with the build.
And here he is, fully assembled and looking... Eh. I mean, don't get me wrong. This guy is absolutely a great representation of G1 Bumblebee. He really, really is. Um, my disappointment actually comes, uh, comparatively speaking, compared to his uh, Moo model brethren, he does seem to be a bit lacking in visible detail. Now, there is a lot of detail here, and we'll certainly get into a lot of that. Um, but uh, uh, given the complexity and the difficulty of this particular build, I think we should have gotten a bit more out of this guy. That said, he is absolutely a wonderful representation of G1 Bumblebee, and I am happy to have him in my collection. So let's go ahead, let's take a closer look, and I will show you what I mean. Uh, coming in, one of the items that I think, oh, let me turn this off. Ah, there it goes. One of the items uh, I think I forgot to mention in the legs portion of this is this cavern right here, this little slot. As you can see, it's not even wide enough for the tip of my tweezers here, but that's all one piece. So there's like three 90 degree folds with pieces that are thinner than the tip of my tweezers. And I'm sure you can imagine just how difficult that is. Coming on up, the crotch is really nothing to write home about. We've got this nice uh, triangle a uh, bit here to kind of make it stand out a little bit. We've got some laser etching on these indented, indented pieces here. But, I mean, it actually kind of looks flimsy. It looks like there's pieces coming off. Um, that's really because of the way it was engineered. It really, really is. And this right here was an absolute pain to put together. Um, the tabs didn't line up with the slots, um, it didn't want to bend right, and it's very thin and fragile material, so uh, it, it really made it a pain. It's the same on the back side. It is what it is. Uh, on the back side of the crotch, uh, again, nothing to write home about. A little laser etching here, uh, some silver highlights along the edges, nothing much. And then you've got this black waist air bit here and it doesn't quite fit right i mean you can kind of push it in a little bit but in the end um it, it does pop out a little bit it looks a little off from the back speaking of the back uh we've got more pieces here and here that really weren't necessary if they wanted some detail they could have laser etched it or put in something with a little little bit of color Instead, it's just gold on gold, and you can't even really tell it's there unless you're looking really closely. We've got this nice uh, circular piece here. These fins were a pain. Um, they're not even balanced properly. They weren't done in a way that uh, is secure to maintain their shape. Um, and... The pieces are so small, it was just, it was an absolute nightmare to put those together. It really, really, really was. Uh, again, we come to this uh, uh, cylinder piece. This is what uh, I think the spare tire. Um, because of the way it was engineered, you know, you've got these tabs popping through that kind of interrupt the flow. It's not really a perfect circle, again, because of the way they decided to put this thing together. Uh, it's not easily assembled. You do have your copyright up here. A couple little indentations um, on the side. You've got this nice black strip and a little pop-out piece. A little silver highlight. Um, the shoulders. Well, these bits of the shoulders anyway. you got little pop-outs, little black highlights. And the chest itself is just this big, bland, 
gold piece with the Autobot logo, which is, I mean, it, it's okay, but there's, I mean, there's no definition, there's no shape, there's, it's just a, a, it's just a big gold square. Uh, the windows themselves are actually inset a little bit, which is nice. Um, you do have a little bit of laser etching detail down here with the windshield wipers. Not that anyone's going to see it when he's standing upright, but it is there. Um, the arms were an absolute pain. This pop-out bit right here, actually, on both arms, really, it, it's not very well secured. It, it, so if you play around with it too much, it's going to flop a little bit um, because it's held together with this very thin thin silver bit right here again very thin very fragile not very well secured and it ends up uh just kind of being there uh nice little silver highlight here nice little pop out detail there i do like how they made the arms uh rounded which um really kind of matches what the uh, you know the the G1 figures got for his forearm or excuse me for his biceps. It's just this rounded bit. Um, the forearm itself, the right arm wasn't so bad. The left arm much worse. We'll get to that in a minute. But it's kind of a clamshell piece that kind of comes together, and you know I mean, nothing spectacular about it. I do like this design here, the separation. However, the, again, this is the underside of the piece. No one's ever going to see that. Uh, this right here, I at first thought was a throwback to the toy, but given the shape of it up here, I think this might just be the Autobot version of Knuckle Dusters, which is kind of cool. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, the hands, the fingers are not individually created like they are in some of the others, so it's just kind of blocky there. Uh, coming to the left arm here, you know, we do have the silver highlights, the same rounded um, uh, bicep, the same pop-out piece here, little venting. Uh, over here, where the bicep meets at the elbow, there's another piece inside there. It's kind of a rectangular piece that holds it all together. And the way it has to be assembled is you put it into the top half of this clamshell, then you put in the bicep, and then you've got to clamshell this together. But it's very fragile, very loose, very fluid while you're trying to do it. So it's a very difficult piece of engineering to try and get done. It's so weird that they chose to do it that way. Um... Coming to here, we've got some silver highlights, another pop-out piece. And, you know, the, the top half of the forearm and the bottom half are different sizes. So, and they, ah, that didn't show up on camera. My bad. Um, they're different sizes, so you can actually see where the bottom half pops out a little bit. Um, you got this nice arrow here. It's not on the other one because of the way the arm is uh, bent. But it is there. Um, same design on the underside. No one's ever going to see it. And the gun is not removable. There are no personalization options here. Um, the gun's not so bad. Fairly easy to assemble. Don't really have any complaints. Uh, it is permanently attached, though. Coming in closer, we can take a look at the head. Uh, nice blue on the eyes. I do like that. Um, the head itself wasn't terribly difficult to assemble. I highly recommend you put the horns on before you start shaping the head. Um, but this area here underneath the chin, absolute pain. There's actually a tab on the underside of the chin back there. And it's got to go into a slot that's on this piece here. But this piece is folded inside the lower portion of the head and so trying to line that tab up along with the ones on the outside to make sure that it all stays together again complication for no real purpose the head itself however once assembled really does look nice i like the uh silver highlighting along the sides the crest along the top 
It's not bad. It's really not bad. Uh, I also really like that they chose to put the Moo Model logo underneath the feet, so it's right there in the center of the wheel. So no one's going to see some big standout uh, advertising on this Bumblebee. He stands nice, nice pose. That's really about it. That's really all there is to say about this guy. Um, let me go ahead and pull out some things for some size comparisons. Okay, first up, we've got him next to the Masterpiece version of Bumblebee. And as you can see, the Moo Model one is significantly larger. Um, don't really have a problem with that. The color is throwing me off a little bit. I mean, G1 Bumblebee is this very bright yellow. This is obviously a darker gold. The metallic shine, I don't really have a problem with. It's the shade of gold. But uh, that's a personal preference and to each his own. And here he is next to the standard size war machine from the Metal Earth series. A um, little bit taller, a little bit taller. Uh, I actually kind of like it. I know the scale is not right, but uh, I actually kind of like the comparison myself. And here he is next to the Moo Model Jazz and Shockwave. Uh, from a scale perspective, I actually think it fits right in. And of course that metallic gold does make him blend in with the rest of his buddies. Um, all in all, not a bad piece to have in the collection, just an absolute pain to put together. It was about 13 hours of build time, about 20 hours total, give or take. Uh, I will say that gold keeps fingerprints and shows them off like there is no tomorrow. It's unbelievable how well the fingerprints show up on that gold. Um, that's really about all we've got for today. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.